where you come from, in your culture, in your family. Is it polite to speak about money? <laughs> in my home culture, Midwestern America with Northern European roots, the answer is a sure and certain no. There's not a lot of ambiguity about this, actually. If you ask an acquaintance how much he makes, it's a little like asking how his digestion is doing. <laughs> it's just not polite. Even in families, this is often the case. Children often learn from a young age not to talk about how much their parents earn, or how they budget their money, or how much they give away. Keep that to yourself is often the clear message. We don't talk about that. It's just not polite. But I realize this is not the case everywhere. When my wife Greta worked in China years ago, she was taken aback at, by how perfectly normal it was to speak about money in the city where she was teaching. Her students thought nothing of asking her, so how much does the university pay you? <laughs> and they had no problem telling her what they made in the schools and villages where they taught. This was just casual conversation in that context. You could ask, what are you doing next weekend? One moment, and how much did those shoes cost? The next. People from my home culture would be aghast. Our cultures and our families all have their own ways of approaching this topic of money. And we tend to carry something of what we learned at a young age with us throughout our lives. But whether we have the idea built into us that this topic is taboo or is perfectly fine for coffee hour, there's a fact that I think we all share. When we talk about money, we are almost always talking about more than just money. Jesus understood this. I don't know if it was considered polite in Jesus's culture to talk about money or not. All I know is that he did talk about it, a lot. Biblical scholars who have tallied up the verses will tell you that he talked about money second only to the kingdom of God. It was one of the topics that he returned to most often. And I'm convinced that the reason for this is that he understood that when you tug on this topic a little bit, you find that it is connected to all sorts of other things, to power and security and belonging and values, all things that Jesus was deeply concerned with. It is never just about money. That's certainly the case when it comes to the Bible story that we have in front of us this morning. Matthew actually tells us that very clearly when he says that the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. The religious leaders came to Jesus with a question that on its surface was about money. But of course, it's really about something much bigger than that. The setup is pretty simple. The Jewish community of Jesus' time was faced with a question about paying taxes to the Romans. For the privilege of living in a Roman colony, the people were expected to pay an annual tax, which among other things helped to fund the military occupation of their country. The soldiers and the chariots and the boots and the spears. So you can imagine this tax was not universally popular. Many, probably the Pharisees included, would have been very happy for Jesus to say that its payment was prohibited under Jewish law. But of course the Romans would not particularly like that sort of talk. So there's the trap. Should Jesus publicly denounce the tax and thereby take a popular stand with the people that might get him in trouble with the Romans? Or should he authorize it and thereby take an unpopular stand that would keep him out of the Romans' radar? That might seem like a hopelessly dated question. And yes, on the surface it is. The Pharisees are approaching Jesus with a topic unique to their own setting, specific to the political and religious movements of their day. The Roman census tax is probably not what all of you were thinking about on your way to church this morning. But what about the larger question here? The question of how our money and our values line up. 
Beneath the Pharisees' intentions to trap Jesus is this very real question faced by people in Jesus' community just as we face it today. How can we manage the money in our care in a way that lines up with our values, in a way that reflects what we actually believe is most important? You might have noticed that Jesus doesn't give an easy answer to that question. The religious leaders wanted him to say one thing or the other, pay the tax or don't pay it. I think we have to imagine the crowd were, was hoping for an answer as well. Some guidance on what's lawful, what's ethical and right. Maybe five easy steps to values-based money management. <laughs> but that is not what Jesus offers. Instead, he says, look in your pocket and take out a Roman coin. Whose image is there and whose title? And of course, when they did that, they saw a coin like the one on the cover of your bulletin this morning. With Tiberius Caesar looking back at them, along with a bit of text printed on coins from this period. In Latin, it read, Tiberius Caesar, august and divine son of Augustus, high priest. It's a pretty big statement for a coin to make, don't you think? It's not just a piece of metal. It is a faith claim. It is a worldview, saying that this figure right here represents God, calls him divine after all, and that he also stands between God and the people. That's what a high priest does. Jesus wants his audience to get a good look at that image and that title and all that it represents before he turns the question back to them before he says those famous words that many of us know in older language. Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. I wish I could tell you exactly what that means. <laughs> I wish I could say I knew just what Jesus was telling his audience to go out and do. I don't think he was saying faith and politics are totally separate and you should keep them that way. That doesn't fit with everything else Jesus taught and lived. And I don't think he was just saying, yeah, go pay the tax. Caesar's in charge, and you should do whatever he says. Again, that's just not the Jesus I know. He stood for something very different from the words printed on that coin. I'm not sure exactly what he is telling his audience to go home and do. But here's what I do feel sure about. Jesus is saying here, remember who you are. Money has a way of making us forget who we are sometimes, doesn't it? It can make us feel like it defines us, like how much we have actually determines our worth as people. It can make us feel helpless, like we have no real choice but to go along with the countless demands for more and for better. It can make us feel restless, like no matter how much we have, it will never be enough. And therefore, we will never be enough. It can make us lose our center and lose sight of what is most important to us. Money can talk. It can do a lot of talking. And in all the noise, it can make us forget who we are. The Roman coin said one thing. You are just a common subject under the high priest Caesar, and you had better obey. And in his in-between-the-lines, subversive way, Jesus said something quite different. The coin may be made in the emperor's image, but you are made in God's image, and you belong to God alone. Don't let the emperor or this little piece of metal tell you anything different. It's not easy to remember that, is it? With all the voices that tell us otherwise, that tell us we are what we consume and we shouldn't be content with the abundance we have and we'll be truly happy when we finally have the next best thing. Those voices don't tell us that we are dignified and whole just as we are, that we are invited to live with joy and simplicity and gratitude right now. How might you approach dealing with money differently if you remember deep down that you are made in God's image, and that you belong to God. 
that your value and your dignity is based on that, not on anything you might have or might acquire, that you can rest sound and secure in that knowledge. We have a bit of help with this over the coming weeks. Members of our community have written short reflections on generosity, and we're going to have the opportunity to talk and pray and think about that together. It's a chance to recall what's most important to us and to support one another in living from that centered place. I really still don't know just what Jesus wanted his audience to do. Should they pay their tax to Rome or not? I'd be interested in what you have, what you think about it. Either way, I am certain he wanted to question the worldview on that coin. And either way, I think Jesus wants to remind us who we are. We bear God's image, and that means no one and nothing can tell us who we are. No ruler, no advertisement, no currency, no demand. Friends, remember, you are held in God's hand, and nothing can change that. Remember and be free. Amen.